All right, y'all. I just drank a lot of coffee. I'm just going to warn y'all right now. I just drank a lot of coffee. So if I'm extra hype, blame it on the on the La, La Columbia. This ain't a sponsored spot. So, but blame it on that. Anyway, Andy Stanley. Let's talk about Andy Stanley. I keep seeing all these Andy Stanley uh, videos all over YouTube. Like, I, I'm trying to figure out, like, what is going on? Like, what, what did the guy do? Now, first things first, let me give you some context about myself. I only watch maybe two or three pastors, um, including my own pastor at the, uh, of the church that I go to. So I don't really, I'm not really in the loop with all these like celebrity pastors and stuff like that. So I didn't know who Andy Stanley was literally until today. So I'm going to show you this article, which I have not read yet, but I'm going to read it with y'all. Cause I think it's it, just the headline alone looks interesting. Andy Stanley to host conference for Christian parents of LGBT identified kids. So that should be interesting. But also, I'm going to go through all these videos because apparently Andy Stanley, he's a Christian pastor now. And I don't know if this has always been the case, but just recently he's come out and he's extremely open and affirming specifically to um, gay Christians. A lot of people will get mad that I even say that. A lot of people will think that, oh, Christians can't be gay. And I had a conversation about this like a couple weeks ago. Number one, I had a conversation where I went through basically the rise of open and affirming churches. So for those of you who do not know, open and affirming churches, essentially they're, they're, they're a, a growing congregation of churches that have agreed to be open and affirming to basically all lifestyles of like LGBTQ lifestyles, trans, stuff like that. So these churches welcome those people in and they don't really think that that lifestyle is a sin, but they, they think that churches should be more open and more affirming to these people as opposed to calling their lifestyle a sin. Now, I've said this before and I'll say it again. If you're struggling with that lifestyle, the place you need to be is church. Like you need to be in church. But here's the difference. I'm going to tell you how it is. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what the Bible says. The Bible says that that lifestyle is a sin. So I'm going to let you know that, that it's a sin, but I'm not going to hate you because we all struggle with sin, but I'm not going to allow you to just sit and be comfortable in that lifestyle of sin and act like it's okay. But that's what a lot of these churches, a lot of these open and affirming churches are doing today. And that's why they're becoming more and more popular. So I believe, and we're going to watch these videos. There's a few videos. They've got a whole bunch of views. So we're going to watch these videos together. We're going to break down exactly what he's talking about. Um, but I'm, I, I'm pretty sure it has something to do with him um, now starting to ride that open and affirming wave. But before we get into the video, y'all. Can y'all do me a favor? Follow me on Twitter. I just like, I don't know. I just, I, I like Twitter now. I never really used Twitter before in the past. Um, I signed up for Twitter. My username is at Nick Von Jones. Um, it's in the description, but it's just Nick Von Jones. I have like 80 something followers. Can y'all please get my followers up? Like, please, I'm gonna start tweeting. I just put out my first tweet. I'm hyped. I'm excited. This coffee is hitting. Um, and also become a member. If you want to support the work, support our movement, if you want to help us become independent so that we don't have to rely on YouTube um, in order to fuel this organization from a revenue standpoint, then go to Patreon, become a member. Um, the link is down below in the description. Man, hold on. That coffee hit me. That coffee hit me. Andy Stanley to host a conference for Christian parents of LGBT identified kids. Scheduled speakers include evangelical pastor who resigned after board discovers son's attraction to minors. Am I reading that right? Scheduled speakers include evangelical pastor who resigned after board discovered son's attraction to minors. That's crazy. Tell me more. It says mega pastor church, uh, Andy Stanley, 
who has been the center of controver uh, controversy following public comments he made regarding gay individuals in church, having more faith in God, is scheduled to host a conference at his church for Christian parents of LGBT-identified children later this year. So he said, and like I said, we're going to watch the video, but I just need to get some context because I'm still trying to figure out what's going on too. So we're going to watch the videos, but apparently he said that gay people have more faith in God than straight people? I need to understand what, what he means by that. The unconditional conference is scheduled. Ooh, unconditional. They say unconditional love. No matter what your sin is, no matter what you do, it's unconditional. And look, Let me just read this. The, uncondi the unconditional conference is scheduled to be held September, September 28th to 29th at Stanley's North Point Community Church uh, in Georgia. Stanley is listed as one of the conference speakers at the event page of uh, the Embracing the Journey website. Okay, so here's the goal. Here's the goal of this conference. Let me see. Can I make this bigger? Here's the goal of this conference. All right. With the stated goal of helping parents demonstrate the unconditional love of Jesus. The unconditional conference includes a scheduled lineup of Stanley, embracing the journey co-founders Greg and Lynn McDonald, former mega church pastor John uh, Ortberg, North Point Ministries Debbie Kazi, and LGBT advocate Justin Lee. In a world that makes us choose sides, experience a conference from the quieter middle reads a tagline on the site. Uh, so it says embracing the journey stated embracing the journey stated mission is to build bridges between LGBT individuals, their families and the church, not in spite of the Bible, but because of the Bible, drawing parents and children into a deeper relationship with each other and vertically with God. They charging money for this conference? That sounds like a money grab to me. I mean, look, I it sounds like a money grab to me. Look, it's not, and this is what I always say, and it's so funny. And I'm gonna we're gonna watch these videos in a second, but it's so funny. Like he's calling the conference the unconditional uh conference, right? To teach parents how to unconditionally love their children, regardless of what their children may be going through. And I said this and I'll say it before, love is not love. This world has a perverted version of love. If you think that loving your child is allowing your child to identify as a zebra, if you think loving your child is allowing your child to live a sinful lifestyle, then you're, absol then you're absolutely incorrect. Hold on one, one second. All right, y'all, sorry, I had a, a phone call come in, so... I forgot where I was. Anyway, um, oh, I was saying love is not love. You can't just allow your kid to just identify as a zebra and then, all right, cool, now you're a zebra. Go to school, now you're a zebra. Now you got stripes. Like, it don't work like that. Like, let's take the time to actually go through the Bible, read the Bible, allow the Holy Spirit to guide us, and, and actually be loving in the way that God is loving. Not just look to the world as an example to, to understand what love is. Because this world wants us to accept everything. This world wants us to be open and affirming to everything. But we know that, that, that that's not the truth. Because this world has no foundation of truth. This world rejects the Bible. The truth itself is rooted in the scriptures. If you don't have any foundation of, of, of scripture then your truth is not based on anything except for lies. So anyway, uh, let's get into these videos. I don't know what to expect, um, but let's watch some of these videos. So this one has uh, 662,000 views. All right, let's get into it. Figure out how to get straight people as excited about serving and engaging as the gay men and women I know, we would have a volunteer backlog. That's my experience in our churches. Wait, hold on. 
figure out how to get straight people as excited about serving and engaging as the gay men and women I know, we would have a volunteer backlog. That's my experience in our churches. Well, I, I'm a gay person, I'll just read it to you. A gay person, when I say gay men and women, okay, a gay person who still wants to attend church after the way the church has treated the gay community, I'm telling you, they have more faith than I do. They have more faith than a lot of you. A gay person who knows, you know what? I might not be accepted here, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Have you ever done that as a straight person? Do you, where do you go that you're not sure you're gonna be accepted and you go over and over and over and over? Only your in-laws house. That's the only place you go where you know you're not completely accepted, but you go over and over and over and it's because you have to. But other than the in-laws, what environment do you continue to step foot in knowing at any moment you may feel ostracized? No place. I'm telling you, the gay men and women who grew up in church and the gay men and women who've come to faith in Christ as adults who want to participate in our church, oh my goodness. I know 1 Corinthians 6 and I know Leviticus and I know Romans 1. It's so interesting to talk about all that stuff, but just, oh my goodness, a gay man or woman who wants to worship their heavenly father, who did not answer the cry of their heart when they were 12 and 13 and 14 and 15, God said no, and they still love God. We have some things to learn from a group of men and women who love Jesus that much and who wanna worship with us. And I know the verses, I know the clobber passages, right? We gotta figure this out. And you know what? I think you are. So he's saying that gay people have more faith than uh, straight people because they show up to church knowing that there's judgment, knowing that people don't agree with the lifestyle that they're living, but they still show up to church and they still serve and they still do this and they still do that. And um, it, you know what it sounds like to me? And remember, we just had this conversation. If you didn't watch the video I made about open and affirming churches, open and affirming churches, they're, they're one of the, 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 the fastest growing churches like the church, like, I don't know if it's, if it's considered like a congregation or like a, de, or a designation. I don't know the difference, but open and, and affirming churches are growing like crazy. They're growing like crazy. And I said this yesterday, you can see based on what the world gives a platform, based on what the world deems to be good, you can see evil in that. Because if the world is placing it on a platform, and if the world is saying this is the way to go, then we know that God's probably not pleased with that. Because you can't be a friend of God and a friend of the world. It just doesn't work like that. So when I see stuff like this and I see him going so hard advocating for you know, people who are in that lifestyle, and saying that they have more faith than, than us and saying that they have more. And I don't want to make it a, a, a them versus us type of thing because it's not that. Like, like I said, we all need to go to church. We all, we all need Jesus. But let's just call it what it is, man. It's a sin. That lifestyle, that lifestyle is sinful. That lifestyle is not fruitful. And the problem is like with a lot of sins, I mean, let's take, for example, like, um, you know, like, if you have a child out of wedlock and you're not married, you can clearly see the negative effects of that sin. You can see the effect that it has on the children who no longer have their mother and their father in the household. You can see the effect on, on the later years. You can see the effect on you know, the children having to grow up with step parents, or maybe they have to grow up with, you know, multiple parent like figures that come into their life because maybe their mom or their dad is dating and now they're meeting multiple different people. And now they're, they're building this confusion and you can see how it kind of tears apart their family dynamic from a, from a children's standpoint. And you can also see 
the animosity um, between the, the two parents that broke up, the arguments, the disagreements, the fighting, maybe it's child support, maybe, you know, it's not getting enough time to spend with um, your child from the from a father standpoint, from a mother standpoint, from whatever standpoint, we can clearly see the negative effects of that sin. Now, when it comes to living a lifestyle of same sex attraction, it might not be as easy to to identify the pain and the negative effects of living that lifestyle because this world has glorified it so much to the point where a lot of people are blinded. But there is a lot of things that happen behind the scenes when you live that lifestyle that is completely against the design that God has. Number one, God said that marriage is between a man and a woman, not a man and a man, not a woman and a woman. Marriage is between a man and a woman. When, you know, God created Eve from the rib of Adam, God created Eve from the rib of Adam as a perfect partner. God tried all these other partners with Adam. Nothing else was working. So God said, look, I'm going to cause you to sleep. I'm going to take a rib from you and I'm going to create the perfect partner for you. And it was Eve. It wasn't Evan. God didn't take the rib from Adam and, and make Evan and say, now you two men go off and be fruitful and, and, and multiply. No, he's, he gave Adam Eve and said, be fruitful and, and multiply. There's so many subtleties and, and destructiveness that, that happens when you live this lifestyle, the same-sex attraction lifestyle that go against God's design, but this world has glorified it to the point that we're blind to it. We just think it's okay. We just think love is love. Now, Andy Stanley, he's taking that same stance now. He's, and I've, look, I've only watched one video. There's a few other videos that we have to watch as well. But just based on that first video, it's like he's just taking that stance of just affirming it putting it on a pedestal and going with the way of the world instead of the way of the word. And I think it's, let me, so I'm, I'm gonna say this, don't get upset. If you look at the church, um, cause there is a, a business element to the church, right? the church, they have expenses, they have rent, their building or mortgage, they have employees. Like if you look at like the churches, um, cause every, it's, these are nonprofit organizations, right? So you can pull up their financials. If you look at most, or I would probably say every mega church financials, the number one expense that they have is their staff. So there's big expenses that go on with running a church. And a lot of people don't see a church as a business, but a, a church is absolutely a business. Now it's under the entity of a nonprofit, but it's, it's, it's operating as a business. They have expenses, they have employees, they have, you know, things that need to be paid. If you look at, you know, what pays the bills? Well, if you grow your congregation, if you grow your attendance, if you grow the amount of people that are in your church, then subsequently you're going to have more money in order to, you know, cover expenses, get new buildings, hire, do more conferences, travel, do, you know, do whatever they're trying to do as a church. So from a, you know, business standpoint, it does make sense why open and affirming churches are growing so quickly because there's people who are living in these communities, these LGBTQ communities, there's people who have a spiritual desire. They want God. They want God. I truly think that we all have a spiritual desire. We all want to know God. Now, you're either going to get to know the real God, the God of the Bible, or you're going to get to know the God of this world. And the God of this world is a counterfeit God that has been taken and because think about it like this. I see so many people, you know, they talk about Jesus and they're like, you know, the number one thing that Jesus said is love is, is love. You know, love is the number one thing. Love is the answer. Okay. Yeah, that's true. But a lot of y'all just be taking Jesus and y'all just be making him fit your lifestyle as opposed to letting Jesus be your Lord and your savior. 
When you're when you allow Jesus to be your Lord, you're allowing him to have a lordship over your entire life, whether you like it or not, because you know that Jesus knows better. Your creator knows better than the creation. But a lot of these people, a lot of these churches who are living this lifestyle, they take Jesus and they mold it to fit their lifestyle so that they can feel comfortable. You don't always have to feel comfortable when you go to church. I'd be sitting in church sometimes and my pastor be cutting me up. Like he be cut, he be speaking and it's like a knife is cutting through me because I'm like, everything you're saying is just hitting me so hard. It's uncomfortable, but I'm here because I, I want to get closer to God. I want that spiritual growth. And, and, and when you grow spiritually, when you grow and deepen your relationship with God, it's not always, you know, a, a something that's going to be pleasurable. It doesn't always feel good. Like, I don't know. I don't know where we got this concept from that, you know, church has to always feel good and you have to, you know, like I get it. People have church hurt and stuff like that. But when it comes to people who are living this lifestyle of sin, you got to call it what it is. But like I said, if you're trying to grow numbers, if you're trying to make money, it makes sense because you'll grow your numbers because people who live that lifestyle, they have the same spiritual desire that we have to get to know God. And Churches are taking advantage of that. They're seeing that, they're recognizing that, and they're growing their numbers by doing this. Um, hey, become a, mem uh, become a member on Patreon, y'all. Become a member on Patreon if you want to support the work. Let's get to the next video. This says, uh, this Andy Sandy video where he applauds the faith of so many, uh, I think that's the same video we just You're watched. Out. Yeah, that's the same video we just watched. You, you know, you do business with gay people. Gay people come to your church. You're not like, oh. in fact, it's the opposite. It's like, I think they're gay. There's gay people here. It's great. I love our church. Where, you know, I mean, and if you're gay, I know, just be patient with us. We're weird. I know. But, but you understand because you're here because you love Jesus and you probably grew up in church and you know we're trying to figure this whole thing out. You, you know, you do business with gay people. I think gay we already watched that video. Church. Thought there was another one. Hold on, let me see. What's this? Patient is worth. Okay, here we go. Number three. The faith of the next generation is worth. Okay, here we go. Leading our churches to acknowledge there are gay people, not just straight people with a sin problem. Now, what does this have to do with the next generation that has everything? To be clear, we don't need to get the next generation to acknowledge that. They assume that. But as long as they think that we don't understand that, they can't hear us. They just can't. Now, is that fair? No. Is it even fair? Should it be that way? No. But it's just that way. And, and this is so complicated and this is so difficult. Now, if you're gay, don't hear me saying you're complicated and you're difficult. You're not the problem. The church is still trying to adjust to a reality that we struggle with and we struggle with it for good reasons. Now, this is so easy personally. In fact, I, I don't know all of you, but I, I bet for 99% of the, the people in the room. I don't, it, you know, I'll be honest. It's tough to Number watch three. these clips. Are gay people. Um, because obviously it's, uh, they're just clips, right? I don't have the full context of the sermon. It says the faith of the, of the next generation is worth leading our churches to acknowledge there are gay people, not just straight people with a sin problem. Okay. Like, is he saying that the fact that you're gay is a sin problem? Because it is a problem. It's sin. And we need to address that. We need to be honest about it. And like I said, come into the church. You, If you're struggling with sin of any sort, which, you know, we all are struggling with sin of some sort, whether it's gossip, whether it's um, pride, whether it's uh, selfishness, whether it's lust, whether it's anything, like we are, we we are all struggling with something. We'll come to church and let us deal with that. You know, let the church deal with that. Let God deal with that. Let the leaders in the church deal with that. Let your brothers and your sisters, you know, deal with that. Let's fellowship. Let's all deal with that. But it's just like if if, if I had a friend who drinks every single day like gets like hammered every single day 
and they come to church and they're hammered at church. Okay, I'm going to be like, yo, look, I'm happy you're here, but you can't be coming up to, you can't be showing up like this. You can't be living your life like this. It's destructive. It, it's literally killing you. We need to make some changes. We need to figure this out. It's the same thing with like people who are living the lifestyle of, you know, same sex attraction. It's like, bro, I'm happy you're here. I'm glad you're here. But can we be honest? Um, this is not a pleasing lifestyle to God. And we love you. And we want to see you be the person that God designed you to be. And we want to see you be fruitful. And, and we want to see you experience um, all the goodness that God has for you as he intended it to be. Like, we can approach people like that. That's not hateful. That's, that's actually loving. Cause that's actually telling the truth. That's actually leading them to the true God. God didn't design people to be confused. God didn't design people to, you know, live it, it, this, these lustful lifestyles of, of over, you know, sexualized lifestyles. God didn't design that. The devil did. And you're being deceived. And that's okay. But we got to be honest with these people. We got to stop looking at them as a dollar sign because now all these churches, they're realizing, wow, we can get all these new members if we just, you know, go along with the open and affirming tag. We can get all these new members. Okay, let's stop looking at them as just simply a dollar sign and let's start actually looking at them as, you know, people who need to experience the true love of Jesus, not the, the, not the love of this world, right? Um, I don't know if there's any other clips. I think that's the majority of the clips that we watched. Um, I don't see any other, hold on. What's this one? I don't disciple and equip people for those shifts. According to teaching of Jesus. when it comes to this issue or any issue, keep that in mind. Our job is to lead model disciple and equip people for those shifts. According to teaching of Jesus and the apostles, um, don't take people's church away unnecessarily, but I'm not worried about you and us when it comes to this. I just wanna make sure that we keep this front and center for the sake of the next generation because God's doing incredible, incredible things and we wanna be a part of it. And yes, it's messy, not because gay people are messy, but because the church is messy and because of the history of the church. And once again, for those of you, if you're here and you're gay and maybe nobody even knows, I just wanna applaud you for your faith and the fact that you would even step foot inside of a church and wanna worship Jesus in private and quietly because that's what's in your heart and you long to know that your heavenly father accepts you and you're hoping the body of Christ will be a representation of his love for you. And I'm telling you, people in this room, they get that. And we won't do it perfectly, but we'll do it to the best of our ability. <clears throat> I don't know, how, how would y'all handle this situation? Um, Excuse me. I said what I had to say. I want to know what y'all think about this situation. And yes, I'm still sipping on that coffee. Um, how should we handle people who, who are dealing with this sin, who are living this lifestyle, but want to go to church? How should we handle it? I, I said how I think we should handle it with actual love confronting the actual issue, just like you wouldn't be happy or satisfied or, you know, you wouldn't feel good allowing your friend to show up to church hammered, you know, drunk out of his mind, tripping. You wouldn't feel good to allow that, but you would be happy that that person is in church, but then you would be like, yo, we need to address this. We need to have a conversation about this. I think it's the same way with, you know, the same sex attraction stuff. So how do you think uh, we should handle it? Get in my comments and let me know. Let's have a conversation. Like this video. I'm out, y'all.